Hello fellow YouTubers, this is DVD Collector 1986 here with a new video for you. Um, this video is going to be uh, 10 horror related questions. I'm going to answer them and then after I'm done with the questions, I will tag, um, I'll go ahead and tag three people at the end of the video. Um, number one, what is your favorite horror movie opening sequence? Uh, the opening to Halloween 4. Uh, the scarecrows, the jack o' lanterns, the the um, orange title cards that kind of glow, the wind blowing in the leaves, and the the skull painted on the mail the rusty mailbox, and just the um, when you watch that opening sequence, it feels like autumn, October. Um, Illinois, and you feel like you're really watching a Halloween film. I love the opening sequence to Halloween 4. Number two, what are your top favorite three horror movie quotes? Um, okay, uh, from The Crow, when Brandon Lee is uh, leaving the pawn shop, Mr. Gideon's pawn shop, and he looks back and he says, um, is that gasoline I smell? I love that quote. In Night of the Living Dead, the remake from 1990, when uh, Tony Todd is sitting in front of the fireplace and he says, um, this is pure hell on earth. Um, the music that plays in the background while he's saying that line um, just really set the mood for that scene for me. Um, the third quote, which is my all-time favorite, is from Halloween 4, when Loomis has already looked at all of the carnage of the ambulance wreck, and it fell off the bridge, and there's blood everywhere, and there's dead bodies in the back of the ambulance, and, you know, you know something really bad went down. And the state troopers, and um, I guess technically Dr. Loomis's superior, his boss, the guy that's played by Michael Pataki, none of them take him seriously. They're like, you know, oh, Michael could have been thrown from the bus. You know, there's no way he could be conscious, blah, 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 blah. They have no idea what's really about to go down. The only person who completely understands is Dr. Loomis. And um, Michael Pataki's like, you know, on his case, basically. And... And Dr. Loomis turns around and looks at all of them and he says, you're talking about him as if you were a human being. That part of him died years ago. Number three, King or Kubrick, which version do you like better of The Shining? Or which vision of The Shining do you like better? Um, I've read the book several times. I've seen the original film and I've seen the made-for-TV version that came out I want to say uh, in the late 90s, early 2000s. I don't remember exactly when, but I've always preferred the made-for-TV incarnation of The Shining. Between that version and the Stanley Kubrick film, the made-for-TV version is the one that is most like the book. Number four, what is your favorite creature in a horror movie. Um, quite simply, um, the creature from the thing, the fact that it can imitate any living thing. Um, it could be anyone, it could be a dog, it could be a cat, any kind of living thing it can emulate. Um, so the creature from the thing, uh, and that's of course the, the uh, John Carpenter version of the thing. Number five, what movie do you dislike that everyone else seems to like? Um, I don't hate the movie, but I don't think it deserves all the hype that it's gotten. It got Best Picture the year it came out, and I mean, there was just a lot of hype surrounding this movie. And yes, it is a good movie, but I just think it's a bit overrated, and that's Silence of the Lambs. I just never... You know, I can watch it, I enjoy it, but I just always thought it was kind of, it wasn't as great 
as everyone made it out to be. Number six, in any type of horror movie scenario, not situation, scenario, who would you want to be grouped with to ensure your survival? Well, that's easy. You guys know how much of a Halloween fan I am. If I could only have one person from a from a, a fictional or otherwise from a horror film to have my back in any situation, it would be Dr. Loomis. Um, I love Dr. Loomis. I love Donald Pleasance. Um, you know, I watched the Halloween films as a child. Um, movies were kind of my babysitter. So <laughs> I, you know, looked at characters and movies as my heroes. And I was always in love with horror films, even from a young age. And more so than Batman, more so than superheroes or heroes in my mind were ordinary people doing extraordinary things um and so if i had to pick one person to have my back in a horror scenario it would be dr loomis dr loomis is smart um whether we're dealing with michael myers or something else um i have confidence that that uh, dr loomis would know what to do and um, I love that character to death. And I, I've often thought in a fantasy scenario, um, if you could enter a film to help the characters, what franchise or what movie would you enter? And I've often thought I would love to be in the Halloween films because I would be the one helping Loomis because he's kind of an old guy, you know, um, he needs a little help. I would like for Dr. Loomis to have my back because I would have his. Number seven, if you were given creative control over your favorite horror movie, what would you change? Um, okay, I'm going to modify this question just a little bit, just a tiny bit. Okay, um, I'm not a fan of Halloween H2O at all. However, what I would have done is had Donald Pleasance not died, like for real, if he had not died in 1995 and he had gone on to do more of these uh, Halloween sequels, I would have, instead of doing H2O, I would have, like the makers of the Part 6 wanted to do, I would have done a direct sequel to Part 6. And I would have continued the storyline from part six. And in that movie, they said that um, if they had done a sequel to six, that you would have found out that um, most of the residents of Haddonfield were, in fact, members of this Thorn Cult. I'm a huge fan of Halloween's four through six. I like the Thorn Cult storyline. I would have loved to have seen a direct sequel to Halloween six. What are the two... Favorite artwork covers to hor horrible movies. Um, I wouldn't say it's a horrible film, but I'll say it was disappointing because it didn't have Michael Myers in it, and you already know what that movie is uh, if you're a Halloween fan. And that would have been um, Halloween 3. Um, the artwork was really cool on the poster. Uh, even the VHS covers and everything, DVD cover, they, the covers were awesome, but I always thought that the movie was not as good as the artwork made it look. The second one would probably be, I'll have to go with um, the original poster of this 10 question topic, um, Troll 2. Uh, I actually like Troll 2, but the the movie is definitely not as good as the artwork makes it appear to be. Number nine. What is a movie you have tried to watch several times, but for some reason are unable to ever get through it? I've actually gotten through this movie the first time. The first maybe one or two times I watched it. But... 
after that, now every single time I try to watch this movie, I can never get through it. I get, I'm just, I, I can't help but spot all the imperfections in the movie. And um, that would be Halloween H2O. I think H2O is just terrible. Number 10, what movie would you like to have in your collection that you do not already own? I don't know if there's a, a version of it that exists. I don't think it's ever been released. But um, not the director's cut that was released. I'm talking the the original intended version of The Crow City of Angels. Um, I enjoy The Crow City of Angels, but I've heard that there's this, that the movie was supposed to be entirely different. But just like with most of their movies, the Weinsteins got a hold of it and butchered it. Um, if you're familiar with the behind the scenes mess that accompanied uh, Halloween 6, uh, and how the producer's cut of that movie almost never got released. It did get released, um, like 20 years, almost 20 years later. But um, there was a very similar to-do uh, going on behind the scenes with The Crow City of Angels. There's this, the movie was supposed to be totally different and had all these other scenes. And like I said, I'm sure the scenes were shot. I'm not sure if it's ever been officially released. I don't think it has. But I'm waiting for an official, official, actual director's cut. The way the director intended for the Crow City of Angels to be. I hope it gets released one day. And I hope Shot Factory ends up being the ones to do it. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And you know what? Let's do something different. Um, there's ten questions here. I'm going to post the 10 questions in the description, so um, that way you can use that as a reference, or you can write them down, that way you'll have them there in front of you. But um, I'm going to take this list of 10 questions, and I'm going to add one question to it. And then what I would like people to do is then take my 11 questions, the 10 questions plus the one I added, answer them and then when they repost it and they tag people i want each person that does this to add an extra question to this list you don't just get the 10 questions that you answered you get 10 questions you answer plus one you added and it just keeps going the question that i'm going to add number 11 will be if you could enter any horror film to, to um, participate in the movie or to help any of the characters in said horror film, uh, what horror film would you want to enter? I look forward to y'all's responses and the three people I tag for this video is uh, Lori Holt, um, James Higgins, uh, known as uh, DVD, uh, I think it's DVD Collector 1974, and I also tag uh, Stephen Yarborough. Um, his channel is uh, Spy the Movie Guy. Have a great day, and I'll catch you guys later. Thanks.